Hello. Hello. And welcome. <laughs> welcome, welcome. <laughs> you are in for something awful. Oh, God. I am so equally. fucking excited. <laughs> We're so bad. This is gonna... <laughs> okay, so this is TND, the podcast that we talk about things we really enjoy. And our main thing that we like to talk about right now is Adastra. Which is a visual novel yeah. made by the artist Hops and Howley. Howley's the writer, not the artist. Yes, <laughs> yes, and Hops is the artist. So, TNDR, uh, TNDR. What the fuck am I saying? TLDR. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Okay, so um, TND. Uh, I'm the D part. I'm Drew. He's a dick. And, and I'm the T. I'm Ty. He may call me Ty Son. It's propaganda. My name's Ty. It is not propaganda. <laughs> but the um the main thing that we're really going for is we're two really dumb people. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, at least I'm really dumb. I don't know. No, and I'm fucking dumb. we just really got into this game. Um, how the story goes? I was playing Grand Theft Auto Four on Friday and last Friday and I was just enjoying the the story that Nico was going through you know not like hitting people on the side of the road or um, just really diving into the story and Tyson sends me a picture less like late the night before and it's of this like naked wolf guy uh, uh, um, uh, he was half naked he had a he had fucking underwear <laughs> on yeah, well i mean like i was very concerned so i don't know why but there's something that was just compelling me compelling me <laughs> towards this half naked character i think i, I can say what was compelling about it i don't have anything like i have never I mean, I knew what the fandom was. Like, I know what the fandom is, but I cannot say I ever got into furry media or anything else. So I am a, just a simple man going on an adventure now that I never thought I would be a part of. And um, he said, I think you mentioned, like, hey, I'm going to stream it. Do you want to watch the stream? And at first I'm like, okay, I'll just humor him. I'm going to make fun of it. It's going to be great. There's going to be a bunch of porn. It's going to be super funny. Um, and it turned out that it was actually quite a good story. Like, <laughs> I actually found myself, like, involved in it. Like, getting involved with the characters and, like, getting into it. And I knew there was a problem when I finished the story with you, Tyson, when I finished the story, and I told you I had a dream <laughs> about it. Man, and when I woke up and I saw the message that he had a dream, I was fucking beside myself with just like pure unbridled glee oh it was so good (laughs) and it was like uh, if you don't know before we even get get really into the nitty-gritty there's definitely going to be spoilers on this. oh yeah i i I plan to essentially spoil the entire game (laughs) and possibly more um of other (laughs) random media which isn't um descriptive but descriptive bleh, excuse me <laughs> um so y- be prepared i yeah if, if, if i decide to um spoil anything i'll give a quick spoiler warning for whatever it is i'm gonna spoil i guess just to be fair and i'm sure I, Drew will as well yes because there's gonna be just it there's we're going to say pretty much every main pop plot point and we're going to bring it up and we're going to talk about them and like give kind of our own spin on them, I suppose. Um, I guess how we thought when we were going through it. And then now that we have some time to really digest it, what we think now, because there are some parts in the game where at first you're really pissed off at one character. Like you have no idea what's going on. Um, and then once you have time to think about it and like some of the air characters give a perspective, you're like, I'm still pissed off, but at least I understand why? kind of more of what's, and yeah, I know like why you're pissed off. I know this happens a lot, but 
just I personally know he's referring to Neferu and Amicus. <laughs> I up. I know that's what he's referring to. Shut up. <laughs> that is uh, I, that was just I uh, I close my eyes during the naughty parts. Uh-huh. I do not like the naughty parts. I cannot confirm I, that because I did not see him. <laughs> I close my eyes. I close my ears. There were no sounds. You couldn't even hear the music. <laughs> I'm so glad. No, I could not. Which I was actually glad because I'd probably cry. The music is most likely. The music essentially did me in. Um, for the I know, and I part. feel like I really want to know who. Because I mean, we know who did the music for. I think the sequel now is getting like pretty popular. Yeah. And the musician, I can't remember their name off the top of my head. I think it starts with an M. I want to say it's like Mao. It's not Dead Ma- Mao. <laughs> dead Mao. Uh, no, not Dead Mao Five. <laughs> like on, on. it's just this big and techno soundtrack. Let me um quickly just I I I'm not quite sure um on the Adastra page. Yeah, Mo. Mo. Mao. Mao. Did I say it? <laughs> Communist <It's>, Mao. <laughs> um, but I don't. It's not explicitly said on the Adastra page. Um. If Mo does Adastra, if he does, then he's a literal god, and I love him um, because the <laughs> god. Let's not get too attached. To <laughs> um, but... I just think the music is just mwah, so good. It just I feel it. Yeah, it definitely adds an extra layer. Like, but um, yeah, for sure. I do want to really make it clear. Like, I there's no amount of furry media that I have consumed. Um, I know Tyson that you've been involved for quite a long period yes, of time. I I am a, a veteran furry dude. Um, I I have been in this fucking fandom for a long time. <laughs> um, and to give you an idea, oh, oh sorry. Oh no, go Shit, go sorry. go on. And to give you an idea too, I'm a 26 year old teacher. Like <laughs> I fucking <laughs> shouldn't should have I I should not have an idea of the fandom, but I think like Twitter. It, it really blew up. Like, there's just so much out there that you're going to come into contact with. Yeah, the whole um, furry thing, it's a phenomenon for sure. Um, and it's just getting more mainstream. Um, like, God, even com- comparing it back to, like, 2013, like, in the past seven years, it has just blew up in fucking popularity, dude. Like, it, it's it's crazy, honestly. I I think the visual media too, like visual novels, have definitely blown up. Like especially with the renaissance of like audiobooks. Oh yeah. Like you can listen to them in the car, and now it just feels so much more connected because there's there's a there's an artist there. I know for some people they struggle with having that third eye, so to speak, to see things. And uh, Hops did an amazing. Oh my job. gosh! And I love. He's it. the only furry artist that I have following right now uh, so i added him to my collection of very <laughs> artists that i already follow um oh my but God. hops man i just his i think it really has to do with like the fluffiness of how all of the wolves look and their facial expressions and i'm really talking about amicus here i know amicus has become like he's the poster boy of this entire game and you know media and, and and i think those warm colors are perfect for the, exactly. the time period mm-hmm. like the the sort of like renaissance i mean rome of course wasn't anywhere near the renaissance but um like very i don't know it just fits with with rome like bright um industrial uh like not only a knowledge renaissance during roman times but a philosophy philosophical one too and i think the colors really fit there right and i feel like he captured the essence of like the the roman architect like the the architecture of like the the palace um oh excuse me i do not want to um be before we go any further the backgrounds and the actual sprite works were done by two different people but um even like I feel like even though they were done um, with two different artists in mind, they both did a fantastic job at capturing the Roman. The it it feels very um, like 
you know, Roman, but it also feels very futuristic because obviously you're on an alien planet, and it was implied that um, their their um, culture kind of influenced what our ancient Rome was on Earth. Um, to the story, of course. So I feel like they did a great job. I I just oh yeah. I I find myself looking at some of the backgrounds and just like really blown away um, by like the detail and the thought that was obviously put into them. I I actually have um, the a background as my current um, uh, background for my desktop because I just think it's so pretty. <laughs> I just think it's so pretty to me. I even in the darkest parts of the story too, the characters still feel warm. It's just, it's a very strange like. You get this really fluffy looking character, and they're saying the worst possible things at that moment in the story to you, Kato. <laughs> <laughs> like the things you don't want to hear, and they're telling you it. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess before we also get started, I think we need to make a disclaimer about anything we critique. Right, and if, I if we do critique, I I something. I did want to go into that as well, Drew, um, <laughs> uh, and. We're both on the same page here, for the record, that um, we love this. Or well, I, I, I know Drew doesn't like the word love. He thinks it's a very strong <laughs> word, but I think this game is amazing for for it being free, and for like oh, the, yeah. the the um, like the character design, the art, and clearly a lot of love. Seriously, like, a lot of love. And like. Went into these it. These characters are written in such a compelling way. Like it's it's amazing. And I like if if we critique anything, um, I did not want it to come by as us like bashing Howley or any of the artists because like we I adore it. I absolutely yeah. we, we, we both really do adore it at the end of the day. So I think whatever choices are made too, they're made out of the fact that they want to see the world continue exactly. in their own vision. Like it is not our book. It is not our um, story uh, artist piece. It's not like it. It's not ours. So what I really want to say is that Howley and ha- uh, Haps and the musician. One more time, Tyson. Um, I I'm. I believe it's for at least Kimia, it's Mo. Um, Mo. So we'll just assume maybe if there's someone else, please let us oh, know. Oh, yeah, for sure. We'll get to cor- where we, we you can contact for corrections and stuff for us because we're going to get a lot of shit wrong. <laughs> so. Speaking of getting shit wrong, um, names. <laughs> yeah, I'm terrible at pronouncing those. Um, oh, my I, God. I'm still not quite sure if I'm pronouncing <laughs> Kimia right. Kamaya? K- yeah, I, I really, I'm pretty sure. Uh, it's Kamiya, Kamaya, something. I think the H is silent. We're going to assume the H is silent. Yeah. Until we're told otherwise. <laughs> oh, no. Um, I don't know. I just, like, they create such a fantastic world. And I, I remember going on Haps' clean Twitter. Because <laughs> I think he also has a not-so-clean one. And um, he had a picture of Amicus. And he was zipped up and looked like one of those little puppets kind of deal. Like, they were inside of the suit. Think of, like, a Chinese New Year dragon type style, but more of cloth. And in the next frame, it has him unzipping. And Howley is on his Haps' shoulders with, like, a notepad and a pencil. And Haps is stand, or like standing at the bottom. And it's implied that this is their thing. This is that like they are behind this. Like Amicus is not real. There's, none of this exists. <laughs> exactly. But they're so compelling. They're so there's such a compelling narrative behind them that there are people probably way more adamant about this, like way into it. Um, and it, it's a, definitely a good reminder. It's a very good reminder of there are real people behind this and this is the part part of the podcast and we might say it like every time that we respect the artists decisions behind it Seriously. the writers and the musicians and the background artists and whatever art form they want to do or how they want to take or go with it i think you said something on the kemia 
uh, sequel, there was a comment down that like Amicus's ass is getting bigger, or <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that's just like a funny, more of like a funny critique. Yeah, like, and, but I'm sure there's much more like scarring ones where it's not less of a critique and more of just like shitting on this <laughs> right. project, and that's not our goal. Like that is not our thing here. We're not shitting on anything. Exactly. <laughs> um, the goal is honestly to just talk about why we can't stop talking about this game. And, I know, like, and <sighs> you you have. I wish I could for, for a bit of. Like, I wish I could just forget about. I it. I I want to point out that while Drew already discussed his dream, at one point we like this was like the day after we finished. Um, no, 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 my apologies. It was, like, the day after Drew had his dream, and we were both still thinking about it. <laughs> um, and we wanted to sit down and, and watch a show together, and, like, we had the show paused for about 45 minutes because we just kept talking about <laughs> Adastra. And we were like... The Mandalorian. We, yeah, yeah, we were like... We wanted to... I wanted to start the Mandalorian, <laughs> and Tyson was like, oh, let's start it. But we paused it, and for 45 fucking minutes, we talked about... Adastra. I don't even just it, just, just ran. I don't even remember what it was. Something about like the wolves being fascist <laughs> and like the bourgeoisie of I, the. I I <laughs> love diet. I love their royal family, um, excluding you know uh, a certain someone that <laughs> that's kind of an ass. Um, um, <laughs> but like I don't like they are the bourgeoisie, but I hate admitting it because I don't want to think of them in a negative light, but it's something <laughs> that you can't ignore. I was... I joined the Discord at one point, and um, one person in the chat, I think it was the, the Kimia, uh, Kimia Adastra chat, said like um, alternative ending the French Revolution happens, but on Adastra. Oh, <laughs> no! Like, in the of... <laughs> and that was just such a funny thought no. to me. Cause How, that's not I fucking remember, funny. <laughs> I mean, well, like, it's just, you don't you don't think of uh, Amicus and the rest of them as, like, detached, you know, from the poor, but that's one of our main, I think I talked to you about one of my main critiques. Well, maybe not a critique, more of, like, what I'd love to see. And certainly... Again, I really want to make it clear, like, this is their story. They can frame it however they want. Um, and uh, I just would love to see more interaction between the royal family and the people who are subservient to them, right. who are under their rule. Because um, the, the only time, and this is, like I said, we mentioned spoilers, but I feel like now... I'm finally going to get into some talking about this small point <laughs> is um, the only time that we really see uh, naturally it's mentioned um, by I believe <laughs> oh, yeah. Cassius that like there are a lot of parts of the city that are underfunded and you know there's a lot of poverty um, but the only time Marco ever really sees this and because Marco's like our outlet into this world or <laughs> My gosh, I'm so silly. Marco, 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 Marco. You get to name the character, right? Whoever you want. Yeah, and we call them Ty. And I, I named like... the character Ty, so we call them Ty. So we're like, Ty, Ty, Ty. <laughs> but and it's like, and then you see online, Marco, Marco, Marco. And I'm the, like, who the, the hell is the Marco? Canon name and of, I'm like, oh. The, the canon name of the human main character is Marco, just in case you didn't know that. So if you ever say Marco, also, we're referring to the human character. Is this your first vis uh, visual novel, Tyson? No, no, I played... I have, this is my first. Oh, really? Yes. Huh. I am a visual novel virgin, <laughs> and my cherry was just popped. Uh, so you fucking <laughs> disgusted me. I, I didn't know. Like, I thought visual novels. We are on a totally different topic now. Holy shit! But uh, anyway, continue about yours. My apologies. I'll I'll save that one. For <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I was essentially just okay. just um, pointing out how. Um, Marco's only thoughts about the city were whenever he uh, wanted to talk to the triumvite, the the triumvites. Gosh, like I said, pronunciation. Uh, like the 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 triumvates, like the older people, like the senate. Yeah, so essentially. To speak. And uh, he saw a little girl, and got him sick 
was something called Avia Box, <laughs> and then he fucking dies. <laughs> it's like what what a good way for the royal family to get introduced or where the royal family you finally get to interact with the people the subjects and, they're and it's sick. like someone dies they're like and not dies like uh quietly but goes out terribly oh yeah like, like awful. uh marco's death was like he started to get itchy and like you kind of knew something was up whenever they I kind of like how subtle it was, but, like, it was literally, like, a small... Because there was a lot of information going out at that time about, um, you know, poli- pol- bleh, political banter, but, like, one small comment of Marco saying that his arm itched, and then, like, and then nothing. But then, like, that obviously... I'm like, okay, what does that mean? See, that's what I love about good writing, is that even the little things, it's not, like, his arm itched and then you just forget about it. It's, like you don't mention that without some weight behind mm-hmm. it, like some sort of purpose. And then and then it's the rug is pulled out from under Exactly. You. I knew something was going to happen. Yeah, like... But and I think also a good thing about that part, too, was I remember saying something kind of foolish where it's like, oh, what if someone planted the kid there to kill Marco to get to Amicus? And I'm like, I don't think that's something he um, anyone was envisioning... And it certainly was kind of a foolish thought in the forefront, but um, I do like how it kept keeping you on your toes exactly. like, throughout the whole story. I would like to make it clear, too, I didn't start the game at the beginning. I started it when Tyson pulled me into it. Right. So, so I he didn't see the... Uh, I've already felt him in on what happened, but... Or I should say, I should just stop saying your name. When you pulled me into it, like when you pulled me into the, the game... Um, and I started to really kind of dive into it. I believe he got pulled in around the time Amicus was explaining to Marco about the dance. That was part of one of the trials. Yeah. If I remember, it was like trial one. I remember Ale- I remember them being on the beach and like Alex, or Alexios Alex, was still friendly. Like he was still smiling and trying to get information out. Yeah, because Al- Alexios is a roach. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. I still love that meme of the hand, the disembodied hand holding the knife out <laughs> at a cat, and cat. Alexios' face is over it. <laughs> I think that just defines the relationship. There. Exactly. I See, uh... <sighs> I... I, I do yeah. feel like I, I just made a quick realization, and you have to apologize because this is our first ever podcast, and we're kind of oh, going, God. we're kind of going like by the seat of our pants, just a little, okay, just so, a little. Um, we should probably give a quick summary of what Adastra is even about. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think in, we were, and we haven't even talked about. I that. think we're both just too excited <laughs> about. I know. Um, ex- talking about it. So we can't keep it in our ex- pants. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, Adestra is about a young college student named Marco who is um, on a trip to Italy for. It's never explicitly said. Very gay. Very. Ga- he's very erotic. He's gay. Um, he gets abdu- he gets abducted by a space wolf. <laughs> And <laughs> it's very confusing. It just sounds so ridiculous. When yeah, you say, like, like the game. This is my first visual novel, and now that you mentioned, I'm like, <laughs> he's oh abducted God. by I'm really, alien. I'm really falling for that. He's abducted by alien furries that want to take him back to his uh, planet to be a pet. Now that sounds super <laughs> fucking like erotic, <laughs> but I swear, I swear. No, there's nothing erotic about like he's a literal pet. I don't know how to. Well, there are some I mean, people. I know, like pup. Play there are some people in in, uh, in the furry <laughs> fandom who really like yeah. the idea of being a pet. So. Oh, pets! <laughs> Bow wow! Bow wow! Um. <laughs> so. So basically, there's a lot of political intrigue. Marco wants to go home. But because their ship is kind of out of fuel from these omnipotent beings known as the parents, um, like it's a special type of fuel to get across the uh, galaxy, I suppose is how they explained it. That they really can't go home until the emperor, you know, gets more of this fuel. And 
Amicus and his brother Cassius are next in line to take the throne of their planet Adastra that has ties to Roman culture. Gosh, it really is kind of um, a lot to explain <laughs> in a summary because there's just so much. But um, there is, uh, and I th- oh my god, okay. But continue. Yeah, j- just to continue, just just so we can at least get this quick summary. And yeah, I feel just like it, it, it'll it become more clear before once we, talk we more. open up the dams again. Um, essentially, it's about Amicus wanting to become the emperor of his planet Adastra. And his promise to Marco is that if he becomes emperor, then he will take him home. So that's and kind of the, the, the that's kind of like the basic plot of like, okay, you you want to you want him to become the emperor so he can take Marco home, and you know Marco can go back to his normal life and try to forget this ever happened. One slight problem though, that Amicus does tell Marco, but he tells nobody else, is that there are planets in the Galaxia, I believe it's called. The, which is a sen- Galaxias? Yeah, the Galaxias, which say. is essentially planets that have been uplifted and educated, and they follow the the will of the parents, which are kind of like gods. Um, it's like a federation of sorts, from my understanding. Yes. And it is illegal to touch or to make first contact with people who have not been uplifted. While Earth had attempted to be uplifted during the time of ancient Rome, which is why uh, we have the Roman, you know, culture it was because of you know their attempt to uplift us. It failed through. It was never said why. It could have been due to aggression, unintelligence. It could have been a number of things. So Marco, this entire time, needs to pretend to be a very unintelligent creature to the other people in the palace, as to not raise suspicion. But we can come back to that later because obviously she hits the fan later. With uh, you know the parents and Marco and the first contact thing, um, another small. And I, I t- Oops, sorry. Oh, you're good. Um, I didn't think I would like the parents aspect as much as I did, and that could be another talking point further on. But anyway, sorry, you were doing a fantastic job summarizing. That that was basically it because we can just like add on to it as we talk. I just wanted to point out that, I, I, in regards to the language barrier, if you're wondering, well, how does he, um, you know, understand these aliens? Um, so while he was sleeping, um, Amicus kind of injected a chip into his brain via. There's a lot of like non-consensual <laughs> things. Yeah, he just had like a friend to him. He had like a device, and he like stuck it under his eyelid and like injected a chip. Called the lingu, I think the the lingua, the lingua, lingua is how you pronounce it, and it essentially lingua. it's an auto translator. Um, lingua. Marco explains that um, whenever it works, their their lips move out of sync because direct translation. Um, so it's like watching a really bad dubbed movie is how he explained it <laughs> because it just does not um, like it it doesn't work like that. And I assume that all the wolves, at least royalty-wise, have one as well to understand Marco. Either that... And, and I th- I think to understand the other planets as well. I want to say yes. not everyone... They never really talk about the language involved, I don't think. Did, did you hear anything about, about it? Like, the, I, at the, the specific language? At the very end... Like during the isn't there like wolven? Yeah, there's wolven, which is I the believe. howling, and then and I remember Neferu, the the son of the pharaoh, mentions that he didn't like all the howling involved in their music. Um, yeah, so I don't know if there's different dialects, so to speak, or um, kind of like how there's Cajun I, and English. I know that and... during the nine months before, and this is spoilers, obviously, before um, Marco goes home. Um, he says that he tries to learn the actual language instead of using the lingua. And he said that it's kind of very similar to Latin. I suppose with, with more howling. Yeah, I it. remember that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, and because he already knew, he was already studying that actually, I think, um, whenever he was in college, and then he knew a bit of Italian, he was gradually. I think his reasoning was he wanted to hear Amicus's voice, like. A, like um, How it was. Yeah. Like. And, and I remember towards the end, he was like, why the hell did I do this? Because he was having an existential crisis <laughs> about just 
coming back to Earth and, like, <sighs> why did I just spend so much time learning something that is not going to be anything <laughs> that I need in the first place? And I'm like... And, you know, God. if we're talking about the lingua, I want to point Oof. something out really quick that I realized while I was eating food earlier. <laughs> so, um, if it's a universal translator... Whenever Marco gets back to Earth, um, he's going to be the ultimate um, ambassador. I know. Because he could understand if, all languages. If, if, if that's how it truly works, then he's going to be able to understand like any language on Earth. Like, I guess that was kind of the point. Yeah. You know? That's why he was sent in the first place. Because he's the bridge. Mm -hmm. Like, Well, I think that's a pretty okay summary and if anything oh yeah if anything <laughs> just, yeah. If, if anything sounds like um untouched i can assure you we're going to talk about it <laughs> leave no stone on or maybe we won't because there's just so much to unpack i know there is um i have a bit though i have a bit okay you ready for the bit sure give me the bits what playing cards I talked to you about this. Oh, so you should be prepared. What playing cards, like, I'm talking spades, clubs, diamonds, and hearts, do you think every character would be? Well. Here's the bit. As just a little brain break, you know, soften things up a little bit. <laughs> okay. Do you have an idea, or is this a question for yes. me? Yes. Yes. Virginia is the queen of diamonds. Well, she's the only female main character. Yes, but she, I don't, I, I mean, that's easy. That's an easy reach. <laughs> that's like, that's like when you're on those tests and they ask and why, uh -huh. and then you just write because. <laughs> <laughs> you just, and then finish it there. Okay. And I think she's, like, I don't think it's just because, I, I don't know, she's just so regal. She's so calm and controlled. Queen of Diamonds. Okay, well, I have... I think Nefer is the Ace of Hearts. I mean... Oh, no. Fucking Amicus is the Ace of Hearts. <laughs> No. <laughs> okay, what is... See, I thought Amicus would be easy, but that's because everyone loves him. I mean, he's a lovable little cinnamon roll. Don't call him I that. Think, though, Don't call him. Don't. He's a cinnamon this, this isn't Tumblr. He's a cinnamon This isn't roll. 2008 Tumblr. He's also... We're not calling him a fucking cinnamon <laughs> roll. He is a... <laughs> he's also ridiculously oh, God. Uh, naive. Yeah, but I think that's a part of the but, appeal. I know. Oh, do you hear those police officers? I do. <laughs> I do apologize. I am so sorry. They're coming for me. Yeah. It's, it's, they know what I'm it's talking because about. This it's is... the furry police. <laughs> um, if you didn't know, by the way, our equipment is a little archaic yeah, right now. So um, <laughs> We're doing this because we want I, to, not because we have the equipment I for it. I, I, I am in the midst of upgrading uh, my stuff, though, so hopefully in the future we're going to have much better yes. audio quality. Yes. Oh, God. But I think... Uh, Amicus is the um, uh, ace of spades, or like any type of ace. I thought Neferu because aces was. can be. Well, I, Neferu I thought was the ace of hearts, but I think oh. Amicus could be any type of ace because aces could be high or low. Like he used to be naive, a little bit more like soft, and then when he became emperor, he's like he hardened up. <laughs> and no pun intended. <laughs> no pun intended. You know, but um, I as long as Alexios is is um the Joker. Ah, see, that's too easy. That's a, that's like that's an edgy boy. I don't even think Alexios is edgy. I think he's a fucking roach. <laughs> no, like I associate the Joker with edgy things now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. How about like, how um, about how about Kato is um as the fucking two of diamonds? Okay, okay. Why? Cause he he's a fucking stepping stone. He's low. <laughs> Jesus I Christ! Hate, okay. I hate the motherfucker. Actually, no. <laughs> I think this is more of your own anger coming out. <laughs> I will this never is, forgive the motherfucker for, for what he did at, at like, the is, final act of the game. You, like, Fuck that guy. This is a punching bag. He is this the is reason a... I was crying. I mean, Fuck I hate him, him too. I hate him too. Yeah, the amount of tears that I think you shed. Don't talk. And I mean, my eyes got watery. Uh -huh, my eyes uh -huh. got watery. No, no. I, I, I you're just trying to sympathize with me. I okay. I was the no. one crying. I was like <laughs> literally bawling my eyes out twice. I did hear like you sob though. I think you held it well. 
It was like deep in your throat. It was like I can't let this. Yeah, go. I wanted I to finish the game, there. but I also did. <laughs> you were clicking, game. and yeah. you're like, I gotta just game. <laughs> keep moving through. Oh my god. Um, I think Virginia. I guess Queen of Diamonds. Even though she's the only female character that's like <laughs> <laughs> that's like talking. I think about. the males have bigger boobs than her. Oh my. No, sorry, no offense, but oh, dude. Fucking Nefru's big boobs, come on! <laughs> <laughs> big boobs, big bo- child. Dude, Nefru has <laughs> big the boobs. biggest tits I've ever seen. Um, uh, I think he's a furious bisexual, though. Yeah, I think he is. I feel like he. We were talking about I, that. I think he's a furious bisexual. And just go- going based on his ideology and his personality, because he already kind of fucked Amicus. I feel like his pride wants him to also fuck Virginia. <laughs> Cause like I feel like he wants to like get it on with the royal family of Adastra. Like and I feel like for no other reason other than his own self fulfillment. Cause I think Virginia would cut off his balls. <laughs> I think, I think she if we're would going off of end him. if we're going off of Cassius and, and Amicus, she's probably a lesbian. <laughs> if if you know like the the phrase, like, the really kind of toxic phrase, like, oh, he just needs a good, like, a woman to set him straight. Oh, God, yeah. Um, I think Virginia would be that one <laughs> in the stereotypical mindset that would set Nefru straight. <laughs> God, like, well, we, kn- we really know for kick a fact Nefru isn't straight. I mean, um, and I apologize. <laughs> yeah, he's and definitely not. I just want to point out that I am, in fact, a raging homosexual. I am... I also am a raging homosexual, he's... but... We both are open to any type of LGBTQ Fuck plus yeah, dude. Fuck trans and rights. I, a... I says trans rights. I say it right fucking now. Yes. Yes. <laughs> How about um, rights for everybody in the LGBT? Like, come on, guys. Yes. Come on. Tell them about your blackboard Oh god! Photo. Wait, hold on. Tell them. Wait, I want to finish. I, I, because I... Amicus says LGBT scholarship. <laughs> I, I want to, <laughs> I, I want to finish my thoughts on Virginia really quick. Okay. Um, okay. I, I feel like, um, Virginia is. See, here's the thing, with their family, is I'm not sure how homosexuality is treated. Well, okay. And uh, this is a kind of a trigger I warning. Mean, it's a Cassius going Westboro Baptist. Church. Yeah, and th- um. this, is, this, is, this is like a trigger warning for the for the F slur. But um, <laughs> during during they, they during one of the trials to become emperor, um, I think it was the second trial. No, no, I think it was like the, yeah, second trial because it was the, the debate. Um, Cassius kind of kind of full out calls a nephew a faggot. <laughs> It's horrible. Like it literally made my jaw drop. But um, yeah, that hit, it really did. I did hit not different. think Howley would go that hard. But like but... it kind of, it it kind of like it hit different in a good way. Like in a good writing perspective, I mean, not like oh, kill all gays or anything. But like it 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 really solidified Cassius's resolve to get that um to get that group of people to like follow him people who were against and naturally there are already rumors about amicus being gay um and then you know <laughs> the the clip he showed at the end i do like how um the sexual aspect of things it seemed like i mean i think two out of the three scenes i think there are three in particular, I, I closed my eyes and shut my ears. <laughs> got off the stream uh, before we got I there. Did. But I, I do like how sex was used as like a weapon. It wasn't just like sex for gratification. Uh, you're um, talking about Nefru again, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. God. Um. I because obviously throughout the game, okay, the sexual tension between Marco and Amicus was was um unbelievably prominent <laughs> um <laughs> and uh, like while they're like Ew. the only like illust or how do you say like the only drawn out uh sex scenes were between amicus marco and neferu it wasn't a threesome <laughs> 
And then I guess if you wanted to count whenever Alexios and Cassius had their dance and they started grinding and making out. <laughs> um, but there was no peen, so I mean, I guess I really it's really hard to... Do you really have to count it? <laughs> there's no dick, I don't want anything to do. I... yeah. I think Cassius has a <laughs> bit of internalized homophobia. He's the type of person in high school that would be like... God, I hate gay people, and I'm gonna, like, tell them it, and then later on he's like, I have a boyfriend, and I'm a changed man. <laughs> like, I bought him for him regularly. Oh, shut it's the great. hell up. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think he's that type of guy, where he's going, I want him to redeem himself, because, you know, he almost fucking died in it. And it seemed, I really liked the little part, too, where when he became emperor, he didn't really know what to do with it. He didn't know. He didn't want he it. He didn't think ahead. Um, and Cato was using him as like, using him, to, as a puppet. So, I, I like. I still don't like Cassius. Not like he's well written. I just don't trust him because he was an asshole throughout most of it. He was an asshole to Marco throughout most of it, and then. He has sort of a little, you know, it's a little like, uh, nice ending where he's trying to help the lower class uh, of Adestras get well because he is familiar with the disease. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, I did like that to, a little bit. To clear up a bit, Cassius was born with a brittle bone disease like his mother had, so he's very freaking fragile. Um, and he said during, I think this was said during the debate, that he had met a child who shared the same disease he had, and he was essentially able to, like, see that part of, um, like, the slums of Adastra. Cassius is like the, he, it was definitely an appeal to emotion for them. Yes. Like, um, and it worked. It was definitely... I, I think I mentioned, like, I expect Cassius when he was emperor to, like, Marco's just saying, you know, talking somehow. I remember they got into the topic of can't humans be awful, I think, or, or something like that. And I expected Cassius to be, like, um, standing there, and then Marco says, well, yeah, we had the Holocaust. And then Cassius, like, stands <laughs> up and gives a Roman oh, salute. Oh, my God. I'm like, oh, yeah, like... Uh, we have this salute we did like for a long time and he stands up and he holds his arm at a 45 degree angle oh, good <laughs> and Marco's just like what the fuck yeah so I expected that because there's a lot of parallels there um, the wolves are clearly like fascist I feel like no... I feel like Amicus though is probably going to like turn that around in the 8 years that he's gonna well uh you know and probably the 8 years and beyond really whenever uh, Marco returns. I um, I think so too. I know with um, the vision from the parents that he seems to be a very good leader. I am concerned because they did say like they both change. Don't. Oh God. Don't. You know where's it going? Well, being and an emperor of a planet and being changes a man <laughs> essentially <laughs> right. marco is trying to create like he's trying to uplift um and educate earth about this god what a great ending yeah i know it would i know it's bittersweet but <laughs> i just i i know i was telling you that i imagine marco at the end just eventually ends don't meet and he has to like get a coffee shop job or something i i i <laughs> swear make ends i meet. i would assume being, <laughs> being a space ambassador of the sort he would be compensated they get some cash they'd be like well you are but, gonna you you are gonna bring earth into you know <laughs> everything they send him like dineros like Roman quick coins and currency. He's like, what the hell do I do with this? They don't fit in a soda machine. <laughs> kind of thing. Or like, I don't know if I can buy food with this, but I expect him to get like this coffee house job and the customer comes in like 
really pissed off and complaining at him. And then Marco just lets him have it. About <laughs> He's just like, my, <laughs> do you know what I've been like, through? Do you know who my boyfriend is? My husband, my hu- <laughs> you know who my hubby is? Like, do you see this fucking ring? <laughs> yeah, you see this ring? Do you see this ring? <laughs> um, you'll find. Do you know what I had to go through? <laughs> you'll find that uh, this has no material based on Earth. It's pretty much invaluable. Or <laughs> it's uh, priceless. In front of the fu- it's priceless. I can't see my boyfriend, <laughs> my husband, <laughs> for eight years. <laughs> Like has a court, like goes. I off still don't know if, um, like they. <laughs> I'm not sure if they are going to go off of Earth years or like Adastra years. Yeah, I don't. Was that mentioned? No, I they can't just said remember. eight years, but because of like the time difference of their days, years will go by differently. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, do they even have months? Like, do they have 12 months in See, a year? See, because they have 19 hours, and, and months on Earth, at least, are very much prevalent on the rotation of Earth around the sun. So, do they mention any type of where they were rotating around? No, I don't believe that was mentioned at all. Oh. Okay. But they, well, they, they have no a sun. I think they have two I think I saw two moons at one point. Because because Adastra is a moon, and I remember at night you could see two moons in the background, which are both well rendered moons, by the way. Well, <laughs> very good moons. Ah, uh, yes, he loves the moons. <laughs> I love. Shut up! Oh my god, Jesus Christ! I know that um, for the the stuff there, there's just so much world building that goes into it and i know the writer just does not have time to go into everything i'm sure Halley would love so. to just fucking go all out and just like write his <laughs> 1000 page um like synopsis on the entire galaxy like i know he has a lot of projects though. i know I there's just, um as much as i want writers to go all out on things like as a as a writer myself i always want to go out into role like world building and build things out but with that comes just the exhaustion of doing so when when maybe that's not the main plot line or maybe there's like i guess the payoff would have to be good for it like there has to be a a big group kind of following that world building stuff Mm -hmm. but i i don't know the potential's there if you if that's more of his concern the thing is i don't know what they want right and um i know with a podcast uh, our goal would be to interview some people just Maybe not interview. That might be the wrong word. But <laughs> I would um... love to talk. I, I, I would love to talk to Howley and yeah. uh, if, if they if he has any other co. Like I I did go to the Echo Project website and um, I know they have a couple other projects that are non related to the Adastra. Um, like uh, I guess what's the lore or you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm pretty sure Holly does the others, but gosh, I feel like I'm being an idiot if I if that's incorrect. But from from what yeah. I've seen, like well, not yeah about being an idiot, but <laughs> like um, Echo Project looks really interesting, and I've we we haven't even touched Kimya yet. We we decided we should. No, uh, we haven't started that. I know some people have started it, and they're like, "Wow, this is our yeah." We're like, "Shut <laughs> up! We haven't started it. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Shut the like it, fuck it, up." We're gonna come over. We'll find your address. We'll find you. We'll find you. No, well, we won't. That's pretty illegal, and I really don't want to get arrested because then the cops will be like, "Why'd you do this?" And I'd be like, "I had to take my anchor out about a furry <laughs> visual novel," and you just don't understand. You don't understand. Oh gosh, you don't understand. Um, I. <laughs> oh god. It looks like. Um. Gosh, I'm. I'm looking at it right now, and I see... Well, and I know... Like... Let me look. I'm... I I have been looking... Um, like, they have a story called Echo. They have a story... I think Echo has a couple games in its thing. They have the Smoke Room. Root, oh, that's... Nope, that's the same thing. But <laughs> basically, they have other projects. It's like... That's like the bottom line. And like... While we love it... We understand that, um, you know, if you have other projects, they're the writers and we're just the consumers, so... Yeah, absolutely. And, like, I, I know I keep saying this, but anything 
they, we don't have to talk to anybody to share what we right. think. And if, if you're following us, it, it seems that there might be something that's compelling you to follow us. And we are more than happy to, to chat with you about things too, or like listen to your, your feedback. Um, we are almost at an hour, by the oh, way. Can you believe oh it? I know. And we still have so much to talk about. We, we I, I feel like we haven't really... <laughs> we haven't even much. talked about the... <laughs> I, <laughs> I, uh. I, would, I would have liked to go beat by beat from beginning to end and just talk about it. But I think that... Yeah, we, I... This is definitely a good introduction. Yeah, like, for sure. We just want to get our feet wet, kind of see what you guys think, or for sure. Um, and either way, I mean, we're still going to continue. <laughs> like, this is something fun for us. And I know this is super long, um, as it is, but like, I just feel like it's needed for this story. Like, it's it's oh, yeah. really needed. Um, very so underrated. It is so to me, underrated. And I'm sure Drew feels the same way. Um, that, I like, do. If you could cut out, if there's a way to, like, cut out the porn, things like that, <laughs> something you're not into, at the same point, like, I can't ignore the fact that that might be an appeal right. for some people. And like, I can't ignore um, that fact. That's the, just part a, of it. a different visual novel that I played called Amorous has its own website. Oh, sh- Oh, and God. it has a Steam release, and in the Steam release, they essentially just um, cut out like the sex, or like they heavily, heavily, heavily censor the sex scenes, so it's basically non-existent. And then, yeah, that uh, they basically censor out any nudity. I'm not saying I almost wouldn't like that, because um, I feel like the sex is part of it, and I feel like. I, s- I feel like you told me that Amorous was more sexy. Amorous is a lot... Amorous is, is a generic... No. Not generic. Excuse me. It's I, I, I do like Amorous quite a bit, but that one is way more just... It's basically just like a, a, a dating simulator. More than... <laughs> it, it, it's both. It's both a uh, visual novel and a dating sim. Still, I... I... <laughs> I don't think I'd be very much into that. <laughs> No, no offense to anyone who I, is. Amorous is good. If if you like if you like furry stuff and you like dating dating um simulators, uh, Amorous is it's free. Um, the uncensored version you can find pretty easily online. Great, I I do like it, but I I do feel like hey, who, um, who's the Kimia and Adastra. The whole like sex is part of it, so I don't really think I would like if it were to be censored or taken out personally. Um, Drew, do you feel that way? Yes, and I know for some novels, too, um, some novels that I've read, uh, especially that are fantasy-related, have some sort of aspect of sex, especially adult fantasy. Not, like, erotica, but there is sex involved. And... (laughs) <laughs> Adastra definitely goes into a little more detail about right. it. Like they <laughs> like, like a lot more they, detail. They have some pretty like there's a lot of parts where uh the character render of like Amicus is just naked and <laughs> like I think Well, it's, oh, that doesn't I don't think that bothers no, me cuz it's for some it's like, oh, they're taking a bath or something. It can be I mean there's clearly also an appeal right. for some people too. I believe that the only characters, that. the only male character, well, Actually, the only two characters that we see naked were Neferu and um, Amicus. And Virginia was never, <laughs> never really <laughs> in a sexual position, which... It's like, I wonder who this guy yeah, is like, for. Yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> in which part of the LGBT is this for? <laughs> like, who could this be for? I, but, <laughs> God, I'm such a raging homo. I love it. Unlike, if there was a straight sex scene... It's like, I bought it. Whatever. Um, I don't think I explained the dream I had either. You, I don't think I explained you it. Barely. Like Marco was on Earth, and they got the communication. They could communicate to each other. And I woke up, and I was like, I am disappointed that they can't communicate to each other. Why didn't he get a and fucking I... phone? <laughs> like a space phone. <laughs> Aww. but a, a flip phone. A flip phone. Like <laughs> the wolves are technologically ahead, but behind and communication they're like oh here's a here's a nukia here you go <laughs> like, 
A Nukia, fucking hell. Nuke. I called it a Nukia because I remember the joke, the running joke for those was like, you could pretty much nuke the damn thing and it would still work. <laughs> um, but, God, we are just, we are whores for this novel. We will whore ourselves out. I, I believe <laughs> after this, we, we, <laughs> we do want to, um, we are going to support the Patreon because, you know, we love these yes. guys. Um, it said... We should not post the content, though, until it's released for everyone because I feel that would go against the artist, that, though. Get what I'm that, saying? That, that, that is very true. Um, I, I yes, do... But we will support. What, what, what we're referring to, of course, is on the Patreon page, it mentions that there are canon stories in the Adastra Missos. Um, and I would eat anything up that's a Dastra, but I would I would, I would hate to Especially if it's Marco on oh Earth. Oh god. I would eat that up. And literally anything to help like expand the universe I would love. But at the same time, if it's Patreon exclusive, we wouldn't want to like just, you know, here it is, like, you know take away for to t- take that away from the Patreon. So um maybe <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe I, if artists gotta eat too yeah if if it's ever eventually released to the public for whatever reason then i would be more than happy to discuss whatever the story was about yes absolutely because if we play something ahead or i definitely will not discuss oh yeah no no definitely um it has to be available to everyone before we discuss yeah exactly the i know for a fact too um we have a twitter handle would you like to talk about that Yes, I would. So basically, I have created a Twitter, um, and the Twitter's name is simply uh, TND. That is where I'm going to be adverti- er, <laughs> advertising. Sounds so funny. That oh, formal. That, that that's where I'm going to essentially be posting um, like links to the podcast, maybe clips that I find that were funny, um, you know. And I think that that is probably going to be the way to talk to us. And I know we're talking it up like we're gonna be these big shots, <laughs> like like we're like, we're, we're, like we're gonna we be like so these like big like, like oh that. we're gonna be these awesome Holy celebrities, shit. but like no, um, but like you no, know if, if if anyone like even if it's one person who's like hmm these guys are something like <laughs> oh yeah we will continue like for that one person we will we exactly. will do this like, and we'll we, be like this is for you one person <laughs> like this is all for we, you we want to um <laughs> like we we want to get more people to talk about the story. Yes. Like that that's absolutely. like the end or like goal give of this, a group. Is like we I would we that I d- yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we pretty much we're like yes 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 yes. 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 <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah, we don't even we're at, we're lost for words here. We have no words to describe it. I I'm literally sitting inside of my fucking uh bedroom. Like this is not <laughs> this is not a grade studio. We are not looking to make it. Oh big. right. We're just one. We just want to talk about something we both truly enjoyed. For me, it was a very pleasant surprise, um, and I expected to come home and like get a good laugh out of this, like laugh at this, like chill. But what happened is instead, I fucking dreamed about <laughs> it, and I'm gonna cry over it, and um, really really interesting discussions especially about free will and at choice i mean god i did i did not expect such um in-depth writing <laughs> i really want to know because you mentioned like when it fades to black you said that holly put cliffhangers in imagine being like you go update by update and all of a sudden like marco's fucking dead oh my god like, well guess i'll just die now i would guess i'll just fucking I would... die <laughs> I I do not know um, how I'd react. Um, I would probably. I I literally have no idea. Like how the fuck. I don't know. <laughs> like how do you, how do you react to that, huh? Like I wouldn't even know how to fuck anymore. Oh shut up! <laughs> I would not know how to fuck anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um. It's just, I to be on that side of, like, you're going and going and going, and all of a sudden it's like, that very intense moment just ends. I, I'm very glad I caught Adastra when it was done. I could just, we could both go through it together. Um, 
at the very end. I was definitely thankful for that too. For sure. Um, um, um I'm saying I'm um so much. Um, 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 <laughs> um, 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 I do have a notebook here with my thoughts. Um, I do too. Like I've been writing things down. I've been taking notes on things too. There's definitely, by the way, um, I create a fun little corner. It's called the corner of mistakes. Uh, that I'm going to take all mistakes that are sent in and put it in that corner. And I'm literally going to physically write them down and tear them off this notebook and just shove them in this corner, <laughs> this little folder. And then I will open them up and I will be like, oh shit, this is a mistake. I'm going to grab that mistake. I will read off the mistake. In the beginning of the podcast, I'll read off the mistake. I'll correct the mistake with the person what they say. And then I will burn the mistake ritually uh, for a very pagan ritual. And then let it, the ashes go up to our gods. And hopefully that will fix the mistake. <laughs> but I uh, I don't know if that will be the case. Uh, we, we will make huge amounts of mistakes for this. Oh, yeah. uh, this is our first, either of our, I believe this is my first time doing I've a podcast. I've never. Believe. It I've is. Never, it is the first time. I've never done anything like this before in my life. But I'm very excited to try. I'm very excited. <laughs> we're, both we're, we're both very excited yes. we are um i think though for right now do we really have anything else to kind of close out this episode um with? amicus is literally my dad oh my god <laughs> oh okay my how god. about how about um fuck kato <laughs> fuck kato okay i do like that one fuck, fuck kato, kato. We are very sorry for anyone who is like they said spoilers, but they probably don't mean it. We're like we yeah, know. We're but I, 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 I promise that line. for for our next piece, we are going to actually properly go from beginning to hopefully beginning, end. Yes, just because I feel like we had a lot of yes. scattered thoughts. We just really wanted to get our feet wet, like like he said. Um, See, so like feel it out, feel things yeah. out. But we are definitely um, going to post something next week. Have probably another hour long episode most likely probably Good that brief. if you want to tune in you want to chat about things hit us up TND yeah the the official at is um podcasts tnd is the official at mm -hmm. and you'll see please add you'll us. see our, our goofy please. thing please we're desperate we, for attention <laughs> we, we we will do we anything need for more attention. people to talk about this with us please <laughs> we will whore ourselves out for attention <laughs> we'll We'll fucking juggle I, whatever, I will, whatever you want to I, do. Anything, literally anything. <laughs> we'll open an OnlyFans. No, I will not. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely we'll give you feet pics. Please, we just we just want attention. <laughs> That's all anyone wants. Um, That's right. Think about Marco. Um, speak of, Think about Marco in that coffee shop. Speak, speak, he just wants attention. Ugh, holy shit, I'm stuttering. Speak for yourself. I don't need attention. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 But well, bye bye. Well, <laughs> that's nope. it. Just bye bye. <laughs> that's that's bye 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 bye. bye. We know bye. bye. No, 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 no. We thank you for like yeah, listening for all the sure. way. And I think this was a mistake. I, I, also... I think you've made a mistake. Like as a listener, you're just listening. No, to the wrong no, thing no, no, right no, no. This, no, the. I think you made a mistake. <laughs> no, no, no. See, you tuned in on the wrong. This thing. was actually the best choice you've made all week. <laughs> for sure, the best choice you've made all week. And you made it to the end, and you're angry. You're like, "Fuck! They really did mean all those spoilers. They just they ruined everything for me. They're just so dumb." <sighs> You're so dumb. I mean, and you're right. But we, we are didn't dumb. Even talk about you know. But <laughs> you should have known. You, this is your chance to take us seriously. You should have exactly, known. Exactly. Exactly. Tisk tisk. Consequences. You got to accept them at one point. But thank you for listening to this podcast, our very first episode. Um, again, our handle is at pod at podcast uh, TND because he he has podcast the TND. attention span and memory of, of a, a goldfish. goldfish. Of a goldfish. I was just. Um. Right. Yes, but <laughs> a, a literal nut on a tree. Uh, That's that is my attention span. But thank you for listening here. We really appreciate it. Please hit us up. Bye bye. Bye bye. Go now. Bye. Go do something more productive. Go do your homework. Yeah. Go, go like study for your finals. Treat yourself. 
Go if you're over twenty one, go have some wine. Oh shit, finals are coming up. Have more wine. <laughs> have lots. Of Do wine. your fi- study yes. for your finals. Yes, study, study. Do you do your duty as a student? Uh, get a job. Get a job, you hippie. <laughs> or don't. Yeah, or don't. Like, just panhandle for the rest of your life. But listen to our podcast. Yes. And then <laughs> obey, <laughs> obey, slave. That's all you are. That's all you'll ever be as a oh, slave. Oh God. Okay. Goodbye. <laughs> bye bye.